On the show today, we meet the hitman of the Indian cricket team, the fantastic Rohit Sharma, who talks about the importance of family. You've said, you know, often that family is the most important thing. And do you think that their presence has made you better? Obviously, when when they are around, there's a sense of calmness around. I get to do what I do is mainly because of them now. He talks about the valuable advice given to him by his father. How do you stay grounded? My father always told me, no matter how far you reach, you have to understand where you came from. And his message to families and parents. Now as parents, you see the sacrifice that they also, of yeah, course, made. Yeah, absolutely. I only talk about this to the parents. Let your kid go and have that dream and let him have that freedom, more importantly. Today we have with us uh, an extremely special guest. An Arjuna Awardee, a superstar cricketer, the captain of Mumbai Indians, the vice captain of the Indian team, an amazing dad to his gorgeous daughter Samaira, a fabulous husband to his wife Ritika, who's also his manager. And I feel very, uh, I feel like I have something very special in common because we share a surname. That's my claim to fame. <laughs> the amazing Rohit Sharma. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thanks. Rohit Sharma, for being on the Tara Sharma show. Thank it, you. It's a huge honor. And as I've said to you before, a lot of the people I invite on the show are people that our, our kids really look up to. And you are really up there on that list. So to start with, kids and childhood what were you like as a kid were you did you always want to play cricket or how did it happen cricket was in the household you know we used to watch it every time i loved the sport when i was about 9 it you know really grew up on me and never after that i any at any point i felt that uh, i don't love the sport it's interesting so it was at, at <clears throat> around 9 and yeah. i know from my little bit of research that uh, you also broke some windows Quite and my bit. kids do that Quite a bit. Yeah, so what did you ever get into trouble for that kind of thing? Or? Yeah, many times. It wasn't the easiest of the societies that I lived in. When we used to play, it was a kind of weird hour. It was an afternoon where people rest and, you know, a few of the kids used to come and sleep. Yeah. We were not like that. We wanted to play. Yeah. So we were kind of opposite. Those families used to complain and... Uh, I but I don't blame them. Yeah. I don't... I Not for one moment, you know, I think now that, you know, they were wrong. They were doing what was right for them and we were doing what was right for us. Yeah. As kids, you're supposed to enjoy, you're supposed to have fun. Uh, that's what uh, childhood is all about. And now when I sit back and at times think about it, I kind of miss those moments. You Most know, uh, all my friends, we used to play together and we used to have so much fun. Absolutely. Uh, but tell me, when you started playing and um, I know when your coach, uh, Mr. Dinesh Lad, he recognized that talent in you and yeah. that potential. What age was that at? And was it something that like, you worked really hard with or did you have an intrinsic talent? For someone to come and, come and recognize my skills at that age says that I had some sort of skill sets. The club which I was playing for, it was right in front of my society. For the next three years, I used to only go and watch those summer camps and I used to tell my friends that I want to be there someday because I love this game, I want to just go go there and experience it. Yeah. Uh, when I was 11, that is the time when I got the admission in that summer camp and which was, which took a lot of hard work for us as a family to get me into that club. Yeah. We had a good team, we qualified for the finals and that's when Dinesh Lard came and saw my potential because we were wow. playing against their school team in the finals. So and I believe then he found a way for you to get a scholarship to go to the school he was training absolutely at. Absolutely right, yeah. And, and that actually was a game changer for me because uh, from there onwards, everything changed. I changed the school, which I was not quite happy about because yeah. I had lost all, all friends my friends. Were, yeah. And I was crying for three days, saying oh, that yeah. I will miss all my friends. What am I going to do? Because I didn't understand the importance of going there and yeah. you know getting an opportunity, playing for the school and playing the sport rather. Yeah. Only when I started playing for the school, we won shields after shields, we won cups after cups, we won tournaments. Only then I realized that it was a great move for me to, you know, go, go to that there. school. So do you think that the struggle that you mentioned in terms of it being tough to get to that camp, yeah. do you think that in a way that struggle made you more hungry? Yes, absolutely. I, since day one, it's been a struggle uh, for us. Uh, it, it was not easy. I wasn't not staying with my parents to start with. Yeah. Uh, that was a big struggle to s go and see them every every weekend. Uh, That's really tough. And I'm sure now as a parent, that must like 
you know maybe like yeah, at that I mean, time you didn't know because you don't know different but now can can you even imagine being apart from your you know you can exactly and that is what i try and do right now not to stay away from my family too much because i know what are you missing when you're not around with your family yeah so family to me is the most important thing and the situation was such that we couldn't have done anything yeah. from either side we couldn't do we tried everything we used to stay in borivli and my parents used to stay in uh, thane for me to go there uh, my parents thought okay let him be here he's gotten an opportunity to play for a school and he loves this sport so let him uh, you know go and live his dream but it's amazing because now as parents you see the sacrifice that they also Of yeah, course, me. Absolutely. And every time I go out uh, to all these academies and all that, I only talk about this to the parents that you know, let your kid go and have that dream, uh, dream, and let him live that dream. Let him have that freedom. More importantly, yeah. Unless he explores, you are not going to know what what exactly is in store for him or you as a family. But that's such a good. point so after you um went to that school and you started winning and winning and winning and of course then once you uh started playing professionally do you feel that you changed a lot as a person or do you think because i know you still keep in touch with your childhood friends and yeah, i yeah. think that perhaps keeps you quite grounded and because you've achieved such heights your the hitman the you know best batsman so how do you stay grounded no my father always told me uh, no matter what you do in your life no matter how far you reach you have to understand where you came from yeah. and that is what i keep reminding myself all the time no matter what i do on the field what sort of applause you get from the people around you you just understand where you came from and try and keep reminding yourself every now and then automatically you know things will fall in place and you will be reminded of what you are as a person that's amazing and now of course coming to your new i mean your other family or your more recent family your beautiful daughter samaira and your amazing wife pritika you've said you know often that family is the most important thing and do you think that as a superstar sportsman their presence has made you better in terms of your performance and your temperament and because recently we had uh, sunil chhetri on the show and he was saying how once on social media when he was losing someone said to his wife because you were at matches he was losing and she was crying and he said i'm going to win just to show them and then he won so it was like a like a movie but do you think that they've actually given you more strength and absolutely without a doubt you know i i get to do what i do is mainly because of them now once i got married you know i know uh, you know my life has changed a bit from what i was before in terms of you know being single and after marriage and then after having a kid obviously when when they are around there's a sense of calmness around there's a sense of love around wherever i go you know i used to think a lot about this game uh, when i used to come back home when i was not married yeah obviously because that's the only thing i loved then uh, the sport and every time i used to finish a day I used to come back to the hotel i used to only think about the game what i did wrong what i did right yeah but now as soon as the game gets over i i pick up my phone either i'm on facetime or whatsapp call or yeah yeah know, of course if yeah. they are not with me Yeah. Uh so yeah so that's how and when i talk to them it's just different world it's just you know uh, they make me forget about everything else but just think about us as a family we joke we laugh Yeah i uh, saw that i saw your post of your so cute wishing your daughter and saying we have to do what midnight rapping and Yeah yeah because <laughs> when she was young i used to rap couple of times because she was crying and how we sweet. tried everything come we on, could Come on can you do a rap do anything No not now, come not on now, come no. on No no not now not now Okay can i tell you what i did on mothers day once a sign of being a mad mother there's something in my head that just got to be said i think you're going to like it cuz i really got to no what the kids are in school and it's time to play the fool you know what moms and dads can also be cool it's called touchwood yeah. but anyway so yeah you end up doing crazy things with kids Absolutely, i think that's yeah. part of the joy of having that's them of, yeah coming to being a dad are you a strict dad of course amira is very little now but mm. do you think you're going to be a strict dad or are you who's the good cop who's the bad cop what kind of a parent are you i'm not around most of the time so every time samira needs something or she cries for something i give it to her but then ritika comes in between and says no this is not what she should get and you know the reason being because you know they throw a lot of tantrum when they are kids they are small so you somehow have to break that and make sure that you know uh, a line is drawn absolutely otherwise it's not a good habit uh, for them to get into so but i get to see her not very often so 
you know, I play a good cop there yeah. and Ritika tries to be a bad cop. Yeah. But she understands because she's been with her throughout the day and she understands what she needs and what we shouldn't, uh, you know, give it to her and things like that. So I think in that terms, right now, yeah, you can say I'm a very easygoing dad. Yeah, no, but see, this is what's very interesting because I thought I was very easygoing, but our kids are now 10 and 8. Yeah. And I adore them and all that. Of course, they're the, for all parents, your kids are the best things in the universe and all that. Yeah. But they're also very naughty. Yeah. And I now am a complete referee with two boys. I'm like, so Rupak is the disciplinarian. He's better with saying in the corner and they go. Yeah. I say they're just like, mama, you know, because yeah. mama's yeah, are... Yeah, that's what she does with me. And she is, uh, she understands uh, Ritika's eyes pretty well. Not mine so much. She is so anything she wants and she's not getting it. She'll she'll find a way to come to me and whatever you teach them, whatever you tell them, they can they they grasp that Absolutely. pretty soon. Absolutely, the values they learn now yeah, stay yeah. with them. So we, we we have to be very careful and touch wood. You know, Ritika has been on the money. Yeah, when that's it comes great. To that, yeah. That's great. Well done, Ritika. No, but honestly, it's a it's a joint effort. So I'm sure you're also a fabulous parent, of course. Yeah, and of course. To get, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> Coming up. You only see the fame because you've not seen their struggle. There's a famous, very famous Australian cricketer, Michael Hussey. He made his Australian debut when he was 30. Wow. And he played for six, seven years and he is called Mr. Cricket. Wow. Coming to inspiring children and mm -hmm. youngsters, um, do you think that more needs to be done at a larger level, at a macro, at a sort of policy level with encouraging youngsters to pursue and follow their passion because we have a tendency to celebrate success, of mm. course, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, you see the person who's right at the top and hear and learn so much from them. But so many people who are trying to make it, what advice would you give them or what would you say if you could change anything with policy to help them? There are a lot of platforms now which has been created and there has been a lot of talks about for the kids to take up the sport and you know encourage them to do whatever they want to. And there's been a lot of awareness around it. When we were growing up as kids, there were not many platforms. If I wanted to be a sportsman, we we had no idea where to go to, yeah. to start with. Yeah. But at least now, with you know the social media being so active, yeah. there are uh, Prime Minister itself talking uh, on air about you know that Kilo India program. Yeah. So I wouldn't say things are not in place. It is, but it still needs to be more. Absolutely, and I think one huge thing that's perhaps changed from when we were kids is that you see how sport is such a great career option. I think earlier, you know that that stereotypical doctor, lawyer, yeah, engineer yeah, yeah, yeah. type thing and yeah. oh, you're playing, so playing as a hobby. But now playing can actually be, of course, you know, a huge career. So I think Absolutely, yes. IPL and all these things have, have and brought that. Not just cricket that. now, you can see so many sports. Now, Kabaddi has taken a giant huge. leap in our country. Absolutely. You know, everybody is watching Kabaddi and they all want to be a Kabaddi player. Stadiums yeah. are full. There's a lot of... Football also. Football as well, yes. So um, these are to name a few, but there are many others as well. Absolutely. Uh, which are doing quite well. So, you know, sports in India now has gone to another level from what it was before. I Absolutely. can say that for surely. And I can honestly say that as a parent, I feel that, of course, so many people are inspiring. Everyone in their own way, I think, is inspiring. But sports people are really people that kids look up to a lot because I think they can they can equate the hard work that leads to getting Absolutely. there. Absolutely. I you think know? Any, any sportsman in the world, they come through the ranks. Yeah, You know, exactly. from their age group days. So all the, all the sportsmen, they'll, they'll have a phase where they had to struggle a lot, a lot, a lot, which says, you know, never stop believing in yourself. Absolutely. If you stop that, then your uh, journey stops right there. Absolutely. You can't move forward. Yeah. Ronaldo is a big example. Absolutely. You know, if, if you look at his teenager days, you know, he lost his dad at the pretty, pretty early uh, age. Uh, age. Yeah. And then he was only looked after by his mom. Uh, so it was not an easy household to be part of. Uh, yeah. And from there to now where he is, you can imagine. Amazing. You know, so I think you can't stop believing that you can achieve. Yeah. That is what I keep telling all the kids, youngsters, wherever I go, wherever I get an opportunity to speak about. You know, these are the examples that we draw a lot of confidence from. Absolutely. Because it's very important that, uh, you know, you see around what has happened to all the other, all the great sportsmen. Yeah. They've had their struggle. You only see the fame because you've not seen their struggle. Absolutely. But if you read what has happened in the past and how they've, 
gone, gone there. from one level to another you will see everything i find it very inspiring and i'm not planning to become a sports person although yeah. you never know <laughs> never say never yeah. but the truth is that i find it very useful advice and very inspirational for anything you choose to do you yeah, know absolutely. like for me and even pursuing this show and continuing on whenever i hear things like don't give up learn from it stay you know stay focused i'm sure people will get bored at times thinking okay this this is the only talk that we hear don't give up never give up but these are genuinely Important. valid you know statements Absolutely. phrases do you think kids need to choose at a certain age or do you think they should play all sport till as long as they want to or do you think at a young age they need to pick one see i don't know the specific age that they need to pick we see a lot of videos being seen on internet where you know you see the kids playing the game and if you go and ask them yeah you know, seven or eight yeah. and we were at seven or eight we were we never held the bat yeah you but know. i think that's also very important to say because i think in this age there's also a lot more because there's more awareness there's mm. also a little bit more perhaps parental pressure and this whole thing of do Absolutely, this class do yeah. that class but actually it's nice to hear that you know till 9 10 even 11 you were not like fully you know as in you loved it but it's not like you were doing like 100 that's, classes that's what or, i want to say when i said never give up or don't let your dreams go away so easily is because people have actually started playing at the age of 27 28 also yeah a lot of I, i can only talk about cricket because i know cricket yeah yeah there is a famous very famous australian cricketer michael hussey yeah yeah he yeah he made his australian debut at, at uh, when he was 30 wow and he played for 6 7 years and he is called mr cricket wow this is a good uh, learning from for all of us Absolutely. there is no age or number for any sport you can start whenever you feel like and of course i'm sure hussey must have started playing a lot earlier but he achieved his dream when he was 30 absolutely that's amazing but, but then see in 6 years he made it so big that people people started calling him mr cricket that's amazing yeah. amazing now see you come across as very honestly chilled and philosophical and i know you do meditation and yeah. mindfulness and i think recently you went to the yeah, heart, yeah. heart heartfulness, heartfulness institute heartfulness yeah. institute so tell us a little bit about that do you meditate every day yeah like i i do it when i feel like i need it not not every day not every day but yes uh, when i'm on tour when i feel that there's too much going around i need to just keep calm because that is my strength absolutely and i think that's great advice so i could keep on and on chatting because it's really really interesting and so inspiring but i have two little kids who are literally going to kill me if i don't let them come and say a few words too so we're going to bring in our little aspiring cricketers so zen and kai are here hi come on they've come from school Say hi. 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 How are you? Good. Good. So who's a batsman? Who's a bowler? I'm a all-rounder. You're an oh. all-rounder. Wow, we need all-rounder yeah. for our team also. Even I am, but I bat more. You bat more. But I can also bowl spin. My very God, good. they're not being very modest. Sorry <laughs> about that. Do you guys have anything you'd like to ask Rohit? Because I know you're a huge fan. So, how do you handle pressure? I have told my mind that as long as I'm playing this game. the pressure would be there whether i score a 100 whether i score a double 100 next game when i go and play pressure will be there to again score another 100 because this game never stops the best example is sachin tendulkar for all of us because he scored so many runs he won so many games for us but he never stopped so every time you play there will be pressure but you shouldn't take too much pressure when you're small. going to school when you're small like you guys are yeah. but you should just enjoy what you're doing right now coming up As a captain I don't consider myself as the most important but I consider 10 other guys the most important. So I know you're doing a lot for Rhinos but you want to say one thing about that? I mean we just want to be their voice. They can't speak for themselves and you know just have them a better world to live in as well. How do you hit those sixes? A lot of people ask me this You're not like Chris Gale, Kyron Pollard, and all these guys. They're they're huge. How do you hit sixes? I tell them one thing that Chris Gale hits sixes in the stand. I don't need to hit in the second stand. I just need to cross the rope. It's still a six runs. Yeah. You don't. You hit that far. You don't get eight runs. You get only six runs. Amazing. So you know that's what I I tell a lot of these kids also. Sir, I'm not powerful. I don't have big muscles. How do I hit sixes? I said you don't need muscles. Muscles. You understand you don't need muscles you need timing and yes of course like 
lot of hard work also goes in to play those kind of shots. It's not easy like you get that shot overnight. Yeah. But you got to keep practicing in the nets and all that. So that's what I've done. It's all about the timing. Yeah. And then, do you have any question? So, as you're the captain of Mumbai Indians, what do you do if someone's playing well or they're not playing well? As a captain, I don't consider myself as the most important, but I consider ten other guys who are playing with me the most important. So, if I say he's good, he's bad, then there is a certain disliking in the team, and you don't want that to happen. You want to treat everybody the same, whether he's performing at the highest level or. The other guy is not performing to his potential. Say the same thing to both of them. Like, you know, keep a balance and keep telling them positive things. Do you want to do a little quick bowling, batting, something, and then? I bowl in many styles, so this is my normal bowling. Poof. Wow! It's a very good action. <laughs> and he he was bowling there, but the batsman was sitting yeah, there. Yeah, but he, that, he that was just showing me his bowling yeah, action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was showing you. Now you have a very good bowling action. And I also bowl Boomerah, sir. <laughs> Show me. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> and this is what I found fascinating because we once got honestly, I won't call it a complaint, but yeah. I won't say which one. But we got a message that uh, they were playing a lot of cricket in every break, but without a bat, without a ball. Hmm. How do you do that? So, imagination. Imagination, yeah. yeah I mean, and also how how much power. So if they hit it like this, you can see it's a defense. Yeah. If you hit it hard out, like like with a lot of power, also you can see it'll go out. He can be an imaginary <laughs> coach yeah. of a team. We we sure. won't allow. <laughs> for sure. Would you like Rohit Uncle to sign your bat, maybe? Yeah. And then yeah, we, and then you guys go and I'll give uh, Rohit Uncle a gift, and then we'll say bye. Say thank you. Good luck, guys. Thank you. All the best in whatever you guys do. Say thank you very Bye. much. Thank you. High five. Thank you, Smile. So Rohit, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. I know I kept you. you way longer. No, thank you for and having me. Thank you. Really, you've shared a lot of happiness, and this is a Hershey's happiness hamper. Wow. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And also. Because the show is all about talking to inspiring people who are bringing about positive change. Here's a kit from Byju's The Learning App. It contains a personalized learning program specially crafted as per the student syllabus. We'll be donating it to a student in need. Through the season, you would have seen that I've been gifting these really cool Byju's kits. I have to admit, as a parent, I'm someone who's a big believer in balancing outdoor play with the use of technology. So when a friend introduced me to Byju's, I was also very pleased when they introduced me to the fact that they have these counselors who give a one-hour free counseling session to a parent and a child at their home as per their convenience, and they give a little test to the child to understand their learning style, their strengths and weaknesses, and then they create a customized Byju's learning program for the child. So it's a great way to learn to actually complete the syllabus in a way that takes cognizance of the fact that every child is different, has different strengths, and understands different concepts differently. So please book a session with the Baiju's counselor on the number below. I think these kind of things are a great way to use tech no, because absolutely. it's also anything, academic. Anything we can do to improve uh, any child, it's, it's always a good gesture. So sure, you know they'll love this. Thank you. Thank you again. And also, I know you're doing a lot for rhinos, so I can't get into another whole conversation. <laughs> but do you want to say one thing about that? Because I know you feel passionately about animals. Yeah, of and... course, of course I do. I mean, we just want to be their voice. That's all. They, yeah. they, they can't speak for themselves, and we just, which is why I'm saying not me. I'm saying we. Yeah. We want to be the voice for them and do whatever we could. Uh, you know, I'm already seeing a lot of change that is happening with them. Uh, but yeah, we need more and more people to join hands together and to treat them as one of us. Absolutely, uh, it'll be it'll be great. Uh, you know, if all our animals are treated equally, like we treat our you know children or our friends, you know. Absolutely. So we just want to do that as much as we can, and you know, just have them a better world to live in as well. Thank you, thank you so much, Rohit. A thank real you. pleasure. Same thank here. You. Same thank here. Thank you. you. Next week, we meet adorable baby Nora and her parents, and a dear friend Sharmin, who talk about inclusion. 
He looked at Vivek and he's like, I think your daughter may have Down syndrome. The world needs to become more inclusive. People always say you need to accept people. Acceptance is not our call. You just right. include them. Absolutely. They feel accepted automatically. Every child has their strengths, has their differences, as we do as adults. Any child with any difference, their children first, their difference or disability comes later.